This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. In association with Micromax. Nothing like anything. new show if you have any queries concerning your education what course to study away or need help applying for that dream job look no further also if you have any innovation or idea to your name which you believe all the all of india must know about well you can tweet us email us or even get onto our ndtv social page it's all happening right here today of course our very special focus we've got uh, nikhil mahajan studying electrical engineering at iit delhi and dev priya mishra who's studying mechanical engineering also at iit delhi we're going to get some talking points from them and see why they believe the course they study is tailor made for them and why they believe it is a preferable as well also as always i expert mahesh perry with us to moderate this and make sense of this debate as it plays out over the next couple of minutes so we'll start right away you'll have one minute to, to make your point they first for you why did you choose mechanical engineering your time starts now when we pass out from schools the, um, you have some interest so for me it was mechanics and i was someone who wanted to work on machines who wanted to feel object it was i could have opted for electrical or computer science in some other iit but i chose uh, mechanical at my rank because i thought that um, doing something that too much abstract or too much mathematical will not be will not give me that much feel when i'll be working on some uh, machine when i'll mm. be doing a maybe a simulation we say that mechanical was an evergreen branch mm. you say that there is recession in computer science department mm. people will be giving you fund days right. that there'll be recession in electrical engineering computer science but mechanical and civil they are evergreen branch you'll right. get jobs you'll get research opportunities wide wide spectrum of research yeah. right. uh, opportunities you have mm. but i'm not sure how true they were Right. But still, that that point of time, they right. were they were that there was one point that um, you did believe that, that was, actually, yeah, exactly. your time's actually up there. So you thought it was slightly more safer that wouldn't sort of be influenced by all of this. But is reality different? We'll come to that in just a bit. But Nikhil, why electrical engineering? Yeah. Go so ahead. when I was in ninth and twelfth, I was really interested in the basic sciences, physics and mathematics, right? So now electrical engineering. So I did not have any exposure in engineering per se, but electrical engineering, as I heard, offered the most flexible curriculum. so i could uh, have exposure in the most diverse set of fields if i went into electrical engineering and electrical engineering was something which had an excellent mix of physics and mathematics you uh, know amongst all the branches that i could think of so i preferred electrical engineering just to get an exposure and decide what's the career choice that i want to make because i wasn't really sure about you know, what is the field that i really want to go into mm. great thanks very much uh, but you know you mentioned that uh, the reality might be different nikhil your next question is What are the opportunities like now that you've been doing it? Yes. What are the opportunities like, and has it lived up yes. to what you had in mind? So I've been doing this for three years now, right? I've been uh, I'm a third year undergrad. I have hard exposure in a diverse set of fields, and it is actually true that electrical engineering offers you a lot of exposure. I'll give you an example. Our IIT Delhi's uh, head of department of computer science uh, is an IIT Delhi graduate in electrical engineering. So that is the kind of flexibility that uh, electrical engineering offers. But then I have had this exposure, and I have had exposure in some other fields as well. For example, I would want to go into you know uh, uh, academic academics, into policy research preferably or something like that. So the kind of exposure that I've got is actually more than I expected when I uh, entered IIT, mm. and now I'm going to something which is completely different from engineering. Mm. So uh, that way, yes, I would say it has lived up to right. what I expected IIT to. Be. Right, that's of course quite fortunate. It's always good to hear someone say that the opportunities are far more than I thought. <laughs> uh, Dave, has that been your experience uh, as, as as well? Yeah, IIT IIT Delhi especially has a lot to offer you. I mean, as he said that it's not just what you expect. It's obviously more than. I'm not very sure that uh, the kind of exposure that I wanted in mechanical engineering I've got or not. Mm. But surely the kind of exposure, the amount, um, the I mean, the, how I have I have evolved as an individual, how much exposure I have is more than what I expected. Mm. and what i would say is that it depends on a lot that what your what you aspire to be mm. and when you are in iit you just want to be an engineer mm. but once you are here you see so many people doing a so so many lo a lot of things like one of our dean professor ambut sagar mm. he is he has done his he has done his uh, 
research MS in mechanical, then he mm. went to policy research from MIT, and now he's in back in IIT, uh, dealing with us, uh, teaching us humanities courses. Mm. So if that is something that I mean that attracts you more, then obviously you'll not um, you'll not be just concerned about how much uh, exposure you have in mechanical engineering department. Mm. But yes, uh, as I want to be an entrepreneur after say two, three, four years, mm. then for me what I am looking forward from a mechanic from mm. IIT is that how much network I can build, right. how yes. well I can develop my skills, communication, how how well I can adapt to situation, how how right. how can even how can Your I time's even, up by yeah. the way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Mahesh, make sense of all, all that that you've heard. It's not really one versus the other here, but the, just the different kind of opportunities that are available. Which is right. I think uh, the, the, uh, the two of them have confined themselves to IIT Delhi. So in a certain sense, I mm. think they were a bit defensive in talking about the course, uh, uh, if I were say. Because uh, very clearly when I heard the two of them, I, very I think that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Nikhil is uh, uh, more satisfied mm -hmm. than uh, him, and he's he's not uh, coming out. But I think uh, there is some sense that mechanical engineering that he preferred. You know, he talked about his passion for uh, you Doing know instruments and, and the stuff. Well, yes. It's not really relating. Uh, you know, uh, resulting in what he ultimately wants to do because yes. he's now talking about communication skills, presentation, and network, right. which is not what mechanical engineering is Actually all about. Actually, is all about. Uh, right. it's, it's something more than that. Right. And uh, this anyway, you're going to get. If you are into a good peer learning uh, group, right. uh, so he can choose anything and he'll still have that network. So right. mechanical engineering is not adding to the whole thing. Right. So What more would you have liked to see? What, uh, is the, what are the couple of things, maybe the top three things that you believe are needed or could be added or could change the view that Mahesh seems to have of you? So first of all, I'll, uh, I'd like to respond to you. It's not just about that when I'm saying that I want to be an entrepreneur, I won't be using mechanical. Believe me, when I'm, when I'm always I'm thinking of a business idea, when I'm thinking of what I'll be doing is, it's completely related to mechanical engineering. I want to do something in green energy. I've done courses and there at that point of time, just uh, go through the Silicon Valley. What do these people do there? People who pass out from school, they just talk to people, they start something, and then you say that, see, the, the computer science engin engineering, the Silicon Valley is prospering. Mm -hmm. But when we do that, we, you feel that um, maybe we're not able to relate that much to mechanical engineering, or maybe we are not able to uh, relate to what we are studying. I'm going to get Mahesh to respond to that. Is, is, is that fair, Mahesh? Sort of, we sort of look at them in Silicon Valley and sort of say, wow, what a great job, but somehow we don't seem to put the same sort of the trust or confidence in our guys are sort of, is, no, is that fair? I, I think it's a larger scale out here that we're dealing with Natasha. Okay. Uh, you know, IIT Delhi is a preferred right. uh, you know, institution. So uh, I think if you come to IIT Delhi, you need to dream, you need to really, really dream right. high. And Big it's very is. important because I'd be very upset if the IIT Delhi students stop dreaming about hmm. what they must do next, hmm. right? right. Uh, but having said that, I would still want, uh, in a certain sense, uh, a greater emphasis on not communication skills. You're going to get that, uh, mm. trust me. When you mm. get into a good institution, you're going to have a great network, you're going to get into good communication skills and all. It's about, see, we're dealing with professional education, we're dealing with mechanical engineering. So what is it that you want to do in mechanical engineering moving forward? My question right. to him would be, if I were to just turn this question around, what would you do, want, to, uh, want to do after you pass out of, mechanical, uh, of IIT Delhi? Quickly, I, yeah, quickly. Exactly, quickly. I was saying, if I'll be going, I'll be seeing what, what are the scopes of green energy in there, solar, wind okay. energy, and I'll be seeing how much scope, not just the, I mean, when you're dealing, when you're trying to form a company, it's not just how efficient you are, it's more about how much, what, what's the market set in front of I'm you. I'm comfortable okay, with I'm, that. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get, uh, try and hear from Nikhil as well. Nikhil, let's just sort of open the debate there, uh, bring you in yes. again. What next for you? So what next for me, so I'm, I've already dabbled into policy research. Mm. I'll probably uh, try to get into academics or I may also try for the civil services because that gives me the option of uh, making policy and implementing it as well. Mm. So that is something that I'm looking forward to. Mm. But uh, at the same time, the kind of exposure that I've got in electrical engineering, that makes me technically very uh, uh, competent. Mm. Uh, and in today's age, I think that it's very important for policy makers, right, mm. to understand what's really going on and what are the uh, opportunities, uh, opportunities that are available to the policy makers to implement stuff for that's, the people. That's actually a very good point and good to hear that there's someone wanting to go into policy, into research. How unusual is it to see India's brightest minds looking at policy? Because largely when we hear, at least from a layperson's perspective, it just seems to be everyone's running after yes. that big placement, that big pay package. Kaun Banega Karodpati starts like, like starts really early. So. I think, Natasha, this country would not move forward mm. unless we have good professional minds mm. taking up governance, mm. right? And it is so important that publicly funded institutions like IIT Delhi and mm. the, the cream, cream Delhi, you know, you are talking about the best students out mm. here. They must start working on uh, policy research and I'm right. so happy that Nikhil is working on that. Uh, you know, and at any point in time, mm. I'd prefer an IIT Delhi electrical engineering student doing policy research, understanding what 
Hmm. Are the things that will change, you know, hmm. give a new direction to this country, get, getting into civil services and right. actually implementing that. But is this sort of restricted to, say, a premier institute I like I think so. Like I think so because IITs? opportunities are, you know, they have so many centers of excellence. I don't know how many centers of excellence that IIT Delhi has, but I think that there'll be 20 plus if I'm not wrong. And there are a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that opens up the world right. uh, for them, which right. would not be the case for. Hmm. 99.8% of the institutions mm. in this country. Right. And even though it's research and all, does it sort of fall uh, sort of in, in line with expectations at home? Yeah, yeah. so that we, yes, was a little bit of a problem. So huh. when I uh, uh, talk at home, I talk about you know uh, me dabbling into policy research mm. and maybe also uh, civil services. So civil services is a preferred option back yeah, home. Yeah, I would imagine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but policy research seems, you know, sounds right. a little uh, right. uh, problematic. Yeah. yeah, but I think research increasingly is becoming more remunerative. Uh, right. uh, and there is a market demand for research. There are a lot of people who are willing to support research. Mm. The government of India has tens of thousands of scholarships for research, right. where the, you continue to study and you paid a stipend of mm. 15, 20, 25,000 rupees. Right. I'll give you an example. This is yeah. this Young India Fellowship, Absolutely. Uh, which has been floated, and we had a mailer regarding that. So mm. the, the, the PMO is funding uh, us. Right. So there's a lot of opportunities exactly. in policy That's research. Been the, like, the, the big thing that the PMO has been yes. sort of pushing. Now, when you, when you talk about working in the sort of the energy areas that you, you've uh, focused on, what are sort of like the key things, the, the key skills that you believe IIT has helped you acquire? How yeah. has IIT helped you here? First of all, I have basics <laughs> are the most important things. The fundamentals should be strong. So I personally feel that the kind of courses that I've done, I was on an exchange to Korea. That was one of the opportunities that IIT yes. provided me. Mm. I went there, I saw the, saw the, the scope there. I mean, the kind of huge investment that Korean government is doing in this, especially in wind energy. Mm. And then th that actually motivated me, motivated me that when I'm back to India, I should actually, I can actually focus on my, when, when in the last year, I'll be, right. I'll be having one, I'll be doing my BTP. So BTEC uh, project. When I'm doing this project, then I will try to focus on just solar energy or, right. or wind energy because right. I got an exposure through IIT. The second thing was, I have already told you about the uh, courses. Right, yeah. The second thing was the kind of people I interact with. That, of course, yeah, being very our, key. Our professors who, right. have, or who are doing good research, who are, who are there working with industries, who are working right. with Suzlon, who are working with some other small startups. And, they and are, their experience and how you can really exactly. borrow from them. Well, on that note, we're going to slip into a quick break. There's lots more where this is coming from. Join us right back. You can be sure that every person who is studying at IIT Delhi is going to do something good in his life.